Hey everyone, welcome to the Real Sweet channel. We're going to take a look at antler mount kits and the do-it-yourself versions. Jump into the video and we'll show you how to do it from start to finish. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at options that you have for self-mounting your own antlers. Now in Michigan, fishing season wraps up pretty quickly in October, November, even though there's a lot of good fishing going on. We shift gears into hunting rather rapidly. Uh, there's so much good hunting in Michigan that everybody takes advantage of it. And one of the things you can do if you're fortunate enough to bag a good buck is you can get readily available mounting supplies like these. These are walnut plaques and oak plaques that are available on the open market. This one is a Walnut Hollow Country plaque. This is actually available on Amazon. Comes as a whole kit with the mounting hook and I'll show you some clips from mounting these two up over the last few days. But um, one of the things you can also get from the specialty houses are these professional covers, okay? Taxidermists use these, they're easy to cut and trim. You can get a nice mount around your antlers and they're just fastened to the board itself using uh, thumbtacks. So you can buy thumbtacks in bulk, you can buy the rope in bulk that goes around the antler itself, and you can buy the mounting pads. Now with the mounting pads, what the deal is, is they already have the wood installed into the foam. So you can get these in small, medium, and large. They're, they're available from McKenzie. They're also available from Van Dykes and a variety of other places. I'll leave the links in the description. What you can do with that when it has the board already installed is you can screw into it with your antlers into it like that and put your screw right into it. You can also take these and form them with putty and clay type materials to make this to where you could actually just put your own material on it instead of putting a cover on it. You could use your own material. Now one of the things you can also do is get these centered up real nice and they come through the back and, and hook to the board itself from the back really easily. So these are handy. The only problem is they can be a little bit of a challenge to work with if you haven't done it much. Um, but you just play around with them until you get used to it and they're inexpensive enough to where um, you can do a variety of mounts and you'll just get better and better at it. Now one of the things we're going to do is take a look at how you can rapidly mount one of these. I happen to want this particular deer. Now this is a bow kill from 2021. This is a public land bow kill here in Michigan. Um, and one of the things that I want to do with this one is I like to mount my deer how I last see them. And this one was upright, standing just like that, looking sideways, broadside. And I like to mount those. Now you notice this one, how I see them. I like to mount them how I see them. So you'll notice this one's kind of down. And I did that on purpose. It gives me the idea, he was coming through the woods like this, chasing a doe, following a bigger buck that I actually didn't get a shot at, it was huge. But at any rate, this deer is a Hollywood movie star. I'll put a link in the description to him. And this one, this one was sitting there like this, locked on a doe, and was only giving me a neck shot. So depending on how you wanna, wanna mount these, right, it's up to you. So you can do a variety of different things. One of the things I'm gonna do is just simply screw this on. And then I'm gonna go to forming this, and I'll show you how you can form that. Now typically, you're doing it on a flat surface like this prior to mounting it to the board. Take your flat surface and you start your cutting. I think I'm gonna go, I'm not sure if I like the brown or the black. I think I'm going brown on brown. Okay, so typically what you're doing is they come with slots here. You can cut this and they cut very easily. One of the things you want to be careful with is not trimming too much of this away. So when you're flat on a surface like that and you start to trim, 
you can get it to looking good. Now what I'm going to do is just take a small amount of this off and then start trimming around. And what a, a tip is to keep your, your pieces in case you need to fill in any along the side and make it look good. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do, this is made to trim. You want to be very careful when you're trimming these out that you don't cut yourself. I'll give you an example of what this looks like. And you want to start smallish and get bigger as you go. That way you're not doing too much at a time and you can see if it's going to set up good for you. You see I'm just trimming it. And my goal is to be able to slide this around And get it to match up but still remain flat now if I can get it flat on the surface of a flat table like this I can pretty much guarantee you that I can mount it to where I want it to be. So what I'll do is I'll continue to play with this and slowly work my way around here, making some smaller uh, cuts just to kind of make it fit a little bit better than this, but that looks really good, okay? So I can get that flatly mounted and that's about all there is to it. I'm making this look really easy but it usually takes hours to get this thing just the way you want it okay all I've continued to do is just slowly trim this out and work my way around the antlers where once it's on the bench and it's flat I pretty much have a good idea that it's going to look good on the board like this okay I just want to be able to bring my rope slightly around like that and make it look good now you can cut these back quite far to get them to lay in there but it's really not necessary you'll screw up enough times to where you'll need the rope to help you fix it All right, so what I've continued to do is just work my way around, taking this off, making small cuts to where it finally fits perfectly flush. It's a very much a give and take, but you can work with these and get them to where they, they really look good. And if you're flat on the table like this, you're gonna be flat on the, the plaque. And if you're satisfied with the way it looks around the antlers, Remember, this is your mount, and once you get this on here, you're going to cover up any mistakes that you may have made. So the rope really does a nice job of hiding any um, nicks or dings that you might have done. So what we're going to do is get this off here, get it mounted. And what you want to do is get it lined up to where you like it. It's your mount. Now this has a real pretty deer engraved in it so i'm going to put it up a little bit higher so that this doesn't cover up the deer and i'll show that to you it looks just like this one with the deer on there so you can get them with engraving you can have your plaque your little name put on it and the date and a real sweet tech tip is one of the things that i do with these is someday somebody's want to get going to want to know what this is all about or maybe i just want to know um I'll tape, oftentimes tape, my kill tag until it's 2021 bow kill, right? 
and it gives you the date. I'll tape it to the back in a little plastic bag and sometimes I'll type out what the hunt was like if it was especially memorable and I'll put it on a um, little card and tape it to the back and that'll remind me where this deer came from and what happened and then what you can do is you can actually do some real nice discussion points with people who ask you hey where's it you can just pull it down off the wall take a quick look at it and you know hey oh yeah i got that one in the up or i got that one in northern michigan or southern michigan this is, happens to be a van Buren county book so you kind of get yourself lined up there are you going to want it i like what i'm doing there it should work out just fine Alright, once you've got this centered up, um, use some high quality screws. One of the things I've started utilizing are these star bit cabinet screws. I like them because they have a built in cabinet washer on the end and they really grip. They're good screws. you're satisfied with it you can maybe put another screw in there to get that to hold straight like I want it once you get it satisfied that's what you got to do is you, you got to be satisfied with it tilt back just a little bit for me so I'm adding another screw Stay right where I want it. Looks good. Now I like that. I like where that's laying. Looks good. So up against it tight. Not bad. One thing that's nice about these, they'll keep them up just a little bit. But I'm just playing. Remember, it's your mount. It's what you're satisfied with. This is an art. If you're happy with it, it's going to look good on your wall, and you're going to be happy with it forever. Now. So you can do, you can do a test fit like that, right? Let's see, I'm covered up just a little bit on my deer, so we're just going to trim that back. Make a nice trim job there, and that's not going to hurt a thing. Boy, I like that. That is turning up just really, really nice. Alright, looks pretty good that's what it looks like so far we'll get the rope on it get the pretty gold rope on it and we'll take another look at it just 
come around it like this. And glue it in place just to kind of take up some of the gap. It'll look real nice. End up looking like this. So what I'm gonna do is I have a tendency to fray and on a lot of this, it does not hold up well by taking a um, lighter and lighting it. You actually need to take your tape and do your tape. Now on the string, it does not come together real well with this type of string with a lighter. So what you want to do is just take your tape, come back around it. That'll keep it in place. And if you leave a little bit off the end like that, it'll give you a nice spot to glue to. You can tuck it in there. You want to get an idea how much you need. Give yourself a little bit of extra. And what you can do also, tech tip, just put your tape on first, right? And then cut it. Once I know exactly where it's at and where I'm going to fit it, I use a little bit of Zappa Gap or some type of instantaneous glue to just kind of fill the gaps. And I'll start working around with it, laying my rope where I want it, nice and tight. Now, not being overly aggressive, but getting the glue where I want it. Put a little bit on the end spot and tuck it in. I can use almost anything to tuck it in with. I'm just using a screwdriver. Just gonna touch it in place. Tack this wherever I want it. look really nice okay so that side's done that side sit there and dry for just a second that's pretty much how we're gonna do it we're gonna work around the other side and get this thing done see what it looks like but all I'm doing when I'm putting that rope on again is I'm just securing the ends and I'm tucking it where I want it remember this is this is my personal collection my PC, so if it looks good to me, it looks good. Get a load of that giant. <clears throat> How'd you like to be mounting that one? We're getting ready to go on a hunt on November 1st, and I'm hoping. Keep your fingers crossed. I'll try to get it on video. I'll leave a link in the description to look at some of these ones. So this one is, uh, this one's out there. He dropped in his tracks with a 450 Bushmaster. Okay, all I'm doing is laying this in here again and I'm just measuring. I'm going to get an idea how much I want. 
and I'm going to tape it first. Keep my end secure. I'm just going to tuck it back into itself and hide it. Okay. And it'll match up nice with the brown. Now you could use brown tape if you had brown tape available. It's going to work my way around with the gap filling glue, kind of pressing it in where I want it to be, making it look really nice. <clears throat> secure the other end. A little glue, get some gap filling glue in there. This is Zappa Gap, it's not bad. Again, all I'm doing is just taking like a drill bit, or, you know, you don't want the sharp end, but get your flat end, or get yourself a little O-ring tool. I'm just in a pinch tonight out having some fun. That's what I want. Tuck it down in there. And just a little bit more glue. Right here. For a head out of that. <clears throat> and I'm just going to tuck it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we'll let that set up and dry. That's about all there is to it, really. You can do a successful, nice job mounting your own. Now here's another little tip for you. Get yourself a metallic paint marker. And on the back of these, you can put the year where it was killed. And we're in Michigan, 2021. Put your name on it if you want. It'll look like that. A nice way to remind you. Then what I was talking about is you can put your tag on there. Put a little Velcro on it. Put a little pouch on it. Slide some information in there. Share it with your kids. Nice. Okay, so the last thing I want to demonstrate tonight is the use of hangers on the back of these. Now you can get these, uh, these are called level right hangers. You can get level mm -hmm. right hangers, again, at your taxidermy supply house. They mount like that. You can also get another type of hanger that's like this, standard hanger. We're gonna use that for this one. And I'll show you the hangers on the other three. And it'll give you a pretty good idea of what all three will do for you. But they are all, pretty much all self-leveling. Uh, you just want to make sure you're not going through your fine oak plaque. So what I'll do is I'll start out at the bottom. That gives me the opportunity to get a pretty good eyeball level on that. That's my way of doing it. All this stuff is art. It's all subjective. Do it how you want to do it. Just have fun. That's all there is to it. It's all about fun. Now with these, they'll mount up nice and they hang perfect, right? That that turned out pretty good. What do you think? I'm pleased with it. For a home mount, less than an hour. Get out there, we'll clean it up, polish the plaque up a little bit, but you get the idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. And for under a hundred dollars, you got yourself a beautiful mount. So this one, this is another type of hanger that comes with this kit. And you can look on there. They're great people. And they're available on Amazon. I'll leave a link to these folks in my description. And if you use that link, it'll support the channel. So that'd be cool too. But at any rate, <clears throat> this one has a little bit different. This is the level right hanger. Okay, so... This one was last year, locked on a dough, laying there, would not move. Nice shot on that one. 
This one, I will leave a link in the description so you can go look at this video. Public land, deer, Bushmaster, dropped in his tracks. This one is a uh, beautiful bow buck, again, from a state land bow buck, 2021. So yeah, we got a variety. This is a shed from where we're going hunting. In November so I'm getting excited looking good hey do me a favor if you like what you're seeing on the channel like share and subscribe let me know in the comments below how you mount up your stuff I'd be curious to know some tips and tricks from you guys thanks for watching